You are listening to the Night and Day podcast, featuring the interview archives of Western New York music writer Tom Jennings. Tom has interviewed some of the biggest names in music and entertainment, and now you can enjoy these never-before-heard interviews. Here's your host, Tom Jennings. Jennings. Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm just having so much fun with the uh, live broadcasting. I figured I'd try two in one day. This one uh, we may have to edit just because I believe that I coughed at the very beginning. But I'm uh, Tom Jennings. And a second audio file that I've just had sitting around. I'm actually kind of just throwing this stuff up while I'm cleaning the house. This is a Garth Brooks press conference that's been was something I recorded back in 2015 when he was coming to Buffalo. So if there's any Garth Brooks fans, I mean, I know that I always like to find interesting things about my favorite artists that I've never heard before. So this is probably something you have never heard before if you're a Garth Brooks fan. And I'll just give it a run and you can listen to it, enjoy it. I'll open up the chat room and see if anybody wants to chat. And if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. But in the meantime, hope you enjoy it. Garth Brooks from Buffalo, New York. Audio quality is not terrible. It, it, it's probably no worse than the audio quality right now, and I'm just using some Beats headphones to record this particular live episode. So, again, if you're a Garth Brooks fan, you'll probably be a little bit more forgiving of the audio quality than most people. But if you're listening to a Garth Brooks press conference, you got to be a pretty big Garth Brooks fan. But... Here it is, without any further delay and any more chitty-chattying from me, Garth Brooks, 2015, Buffalo, New York. Okay. Hey, how are you all? Uh, my deepest good. apologies for being late. Uh, De-icing and stuff, we, we got the same thing done in Nashville, so... Uh, uh, so again, my apologies. Uh, we shouldn't have to wait. Um, welcome to Buffalo. Thank you. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's about what we do here. Uh, I really don't have that much of an opening uh, speech. Uh, feel very lucky to be back here. Uh, band and crew is very much ready. We very much remember this. Um, we shot in 1997. Um, uh, we shot two big events in our lives. One was Central Park and one was Dublin Island. This is where the Dublin Island crew came last to watch to prep for the show. So we have a lot of great memories from here. This is also where we did our last CMA appearance, uh, if you remember, uh, this year with myself. So uh, great memories of this place, great memories of the people, great memories of the crowd, and so... However you want to look at this, it's kind of putting a lot of pressure back on you because we have a lot of great memories and we expect to see those people again, hopefully. And then Ticketmaster is telling us about just shy of 48% here um, who bought tickets were 10 years old or not even born yet uh, last wow. time we were here. So um, it'll be neat to see the faces hopefully we remember. And it'll be really cool to see the faces uh, that weren't able to come last time. But 10 to 1, uh, my bet is going to be on the fact that no matter which group they belong to, they'll know every word to every verse of every song. That's what we're counting on, and, and I hope that comes true. Right. So uh, if it's okay, if we open it up for uh, questions, I'd love for you to introduce yourself so uh, I'll know who I'm talking to. Okay. Please, what do you do? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Garth. I'm Mary Alice from Channel 2 in Buffalo. Do Mary Alice, have we met before? I think we may have, yes. Were you, well, were you old enough to be doing this? Yeah, yeah, no? sure. Okay, okay. But the concealer's holding yes. on. Uh, six sold-out shows is unprecedented for Buffalo. We've never had an artist sell out that many shows in one day. Um, your reaction to that, and how common is that for you? Well, we feel very lucky, and, you know, we're, uh, we are competing. Uh, our main thing that we look at is what we did in the 90s, and this is one of two cities on the tours that we did not break the attendance record, but broke the number of night shows. So, uh, same way in Lexington. Lexington went from four shows to three, but we still fell short of the attendance record by couple thousand and what that makes me what it makes me is it feels like we've got the same number of people that want to see us but they all have better seats than <laughs> last time which is very very nice so uh this is this is going to be fun we look forward to it we take it on as a challenge the only thing that will that will 
kind of go down during the six shows is the voice. It just doesn't hold up, and I wish, I wish it did. They keep telling me, take it easy. I can't. I just, it's, it's like a kid in a toy store. They tell me to quit scream, screaming. I can't. I just, I just. If the people are into it, I get into it. And the next thing I know, my voice is gone. And so shows, you know, three, four, five, and six. I hope uh, study the lyrics, please, because I'm gonna need your help uh, to get through kind of thing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering. Um, I'm Tom from RockMusicStar.com. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. Sorry. Let me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me get somewhere. Uh -huh. I mean, right, cool. you see shooting up like that, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just wondering, what, what was what has been the longest amount of uh, dates that you've ever played in one city? I read something on the internet the other day. It was kind of funny. It said Garth Brooks announces his world tour, uh, two hundred or three hundred dates in three cities. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, would probably be the longest one. We were there fourteen days. I think we had eleven shows. Um, Denver will be the opposite. Denver, we're there for five nights. I believe we have nine shows. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Um, so you get, uh, maybe it's six and nine, I don't know. But we, but, so you get the, the opposite. The, the main thing is we feel lucky to get, have a place to play. We feel lucky that people come out and see us. And especially at this age, you feel even luckier. And uh, we would have, you know, we looked at the 90s tour. And we said we'd be lucky if we did 50% of that. And right now we're sitting at about 120, 130 percent of that, which yeah, is you're, crazy. You're killing it. So we, we feel very lucky, and feel very, very lucky that the people are showing up. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Cypress from Music.com. Kathy or Cassie? Kathy. Kathy. Um, how has it been transitioning? By the way, welcome to Buffalo. Thank you. Um, how has it been transitioning back into the tour season? It's good. It happened about. It happened about. Tulsa, you started at the turn of the year. You started to start to feel good again. The, the first four months were catching up. And then uh, something happened in Boston, which was unbelievable. Pittsburgh was my birthday weekend, which was a blast. And then the early show Saturday night in Detroit, something clicked where as we breathed out, the audience breathed in, and it started doing that thing that you remember. So just now starting to feel like it's coming up, which I told the band and crew out of humbleness to give us six months. I didn't think it'd take that long. It has taken six months to kind of get your feet underneath you, but now you're starting to, now you can explore the next level and see where you go. Are you mastering Twitter and social media? How's that going? I don't know if I'm mastering it, but uh, I do have to say what I love about Twitter is it wipes all the walls out between me and you. And what I really love is to respond and then get the response to that respond, you know, kind of thing. But it's just like um, we had this thing before most of you were born in Nashville called Fanfare. And Fanfare was at those times where people would come in the walls and be gone. You could talk to the people that allowed you to do this. And uh, it was great. And that's what Twitter is, kind of 24-7. And Facebook's the same way. Facebook is uh, more like posting big events of the of the day, and Twitter's more the moment kind of thing. So it's just pretty cool. Yes, sir. Hey, Garth. Uh, Tim O'Shea, Buffalo News. Hey, Tim. Uh, so, I mean, as a dad, as a husband, what, what's it been like for your family uh, to be part of this experience, to see it, to, in some cases, be on stage with you? It's cool. Are you are you a dad and a father as well? I am. Uh, how old are your babies? Uh, they are uh, 20, 19, and 9. Okay, so yeah. same same exact same thing. Um, before, when we were on tour, it was like, let's say we did the Muppet Show one night. Well, the kids came in there and go, oh, I thought there was a Muppet Show. This is about Dad, you know. <laughs> so at that age, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't their thing. Now, them off to college, if they come see a show, it's because they want to. They roll in, now it's really cool. And it's, it's like their babies again for me. Every every chance I get to, to hold them, it's you know something amazing for me. Especially, and I'm sure you already know this, that they're gone. They're just gone, and you never can get them back. They say they come back, but uh, so far we're in that thing where they're just gone. Kind of thing. But they're exploring their own lives. Good for them. And, and I pray to God for them every night. Um, as far as no guilt, that's the great thing about this tour. You started, uh, Sandy and I were married when we started the tour, and we didn't have cell phones in. So I wasn't much of a partner to her. Three, four days we'd go, we'd be playing the clubs. And I would call her, and that's just not right. And we wouldn't talk, and, and, and so then they hand you your first child, and all you can think of is, I want to be the parent my mom and dad was to be. I want to be there for everything, and you're not. So eventually comes the thing where you retire, you go raise your baby's greatest gift God and the people have ever given to us that time. And then as the house is starting to get empty, you know, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives? It was a 
issues with it, said, you think about doing it then? And uh, wow, I never thought it'd be an option. So it's cool that people are, are showing up. That answer your question? I'm sorry, I was thinking of all. Hey, Garth, uh, Josh Maloney, nice to meet you. Hey, Josh. Uh, when you were thinking about doing this for a career, did you ever think that Snowy Buffalo would be such a hotbed for country music? <laughs> all you gotta do is go run and play and, and find out on your own what you do. So did I think as a kid in Oklahoma that New York would support country? No, not, not at all, especially then, it didn't, because the world was a lot bigger then. It's a lot smaller now. Then you started doing fairs, state fairs, county fairs. You start to see people showing up that are from Buffalo. They got their Buffalo colors, even though you're not in Buffalo. And you start to go, wow, I wonder what Buffalo would like. Then you play here. Mm -hmm. Try and remember this. Our tour, this, this tour, will see about 55, 60% of the cities we saw in the last tour because one show is turning to six or one show is turning. So who picks where we go? Right. Yeah. I pick. So how do you pick? For me, I don't care about the dollar bill bottom line. I care about memories of, did I have fun there? Did I have fun there? Did we get to do stuff as a crew there and a band there? You bet you we're going back to all the fun places. So even though we wouldn't have dreamed of it, can't dream of it now without it. Right. This is a fun place to play. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Gus from Backstage Access. I have a question. Now, you were one of the first artists, country artists, to bring theatrics into country music. Now, everybody today, if you go to a country show, everybody's using some type of theatrics. What do you think about today's state of country music and the other performance and where it's gone from then to now? I think this happens to all old guys in any business. Soon they're going to start looking at you and going, Hey, you notice somebody's doing what you did when you were a kid. And my only answer to that always is if you've ever seen a Garth Brooks show and you saw a Chris Ledoux show, you would have said, Garth Brooks stole this show from Chris Ledoux and they'd be right. And Chris stole it from somebody else and it goes on and on. Uh, my early influences as a kid, uh, uh, one of the groups uh, was Queen. My high school sweetheart surprised me with tickets to go see Queen. I think I was 17, and I think I'm the 13th row. There was a place, this is funny, there's a, there's a thing where Brian May, the guitar player, comes out, fans start blowing with the long hair, and this piece of light rig comes down and starts battling it on this arm. And he's playing, the light rig's dying, and he's playing, the crowd's going crazy. Watch the opening number tonight. That's where it's from, something from Queen. So just uh, those influences never go away, and those things that you see in here, never go away for people who either follow music or don't in here. These things that you'll see tonight hopefully will last a lifetime. Remember, it's hopefully good ones. Yes, sir? Hey, John. Being talented is the whole lot. How can you tell in the industry you can communicate Ooh, tough. Um, tails wagging the dog right now. Very much technology is key. When I, when I left this business in the 90s, content was key. But the truth is, John, content is always key. They might be able to put curtains in front of it. Content will always be key because technology right now is wagging the dog, but technology is dying for content. And where content used to be king, great content is going to be king now because there is so much content. So uh, that's the thing. Just tell these songwriters, tell these publishers, tell these guys in Washington, protect the art and the art will survive. If you don't, it'll, it'll fall victim to technology. I'm not bitching and complaining. I'm just saying that's what I think. Yes, ma'am. What is the girl that got the back of the habitat's name? I'm Melina with Channel 4, the TVS station. Melina? Melina. Melina. Nice to meet you, Melina. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Buffalo. Thank you, ma'am. Oklahoma State? Yes, ma'am. Oklahoma State, Scott. Go Pokes. How'd you end up here? I'm up here. Are you up here now? Thurman Thomas is an Oklahoma State grad? Really? I didn't know that. Just one of our proudest moments is Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah. Perfect. The, the greatest thing about the greatest athletes is how much time they spend with future athletes' children. So we'll be working with Mr. Thomas at the pro camp this weekend. Uh, because that's what they do, and somebody very else high up here in this in this region that was also a national hero and a global hero for everybody will be helping us out as well. Um, my my thing is, 
the greatest are the humblest, and I think that's what you got with these two guys for sure. Uh, Thurman Thomas um, was a starting running back when I was watching him in school, and uh, there was a there was a young kid that was his second that never could start in front of him named Barry Sanders that was there at the same time. So it was it was a good time, like always, to be a cowboy. But uh, really, really proud of, of those guys and how they represented themselves as they as they moved forward. Yes, sir. Hey, Rob Banks from one point five. Hey, Rob. Hey, when uh, you talk about how we can involve the last year, they were that year, you know, and other things are years. How cool is it that you took the time away and now you're jumping back into it? You've already been on it for a few years. That's very sweet. We were talking about this morning. We were doing some radio interviews for the Portland on sale, which is tomorrow. And they're doing a big ACM campaign up there. And the thought is, when they were giving out nominations for the ACMs, this tour was two or three months old. That's a sweet nod. So whether you win or not, it's like, can't believe you're in it. So it's cool. Um, you know, you look back and you, you try and go, well, wow, how long has it been since in between people have won it? I think straight went 18 years in between winning it one year and winning it again. Straight always has all the record, all the, all the cool stuff. So, uh, you know, he is showing us that it is possible. But the truth is, it's like Monsieur would said, we're going to go there and feel very lucky to be there. We're going to enjoy the game. It's going to be our first award show uh, together. This might be our first one ever as husband and wife just to go and get to sit and, and, and watch us. This will be fun. Yes, ma'am. Hi, guys. Good morning. Hi, Kate. Good, thank you. Well, you know, I mean, you're talking about food. I'm in. Okay, I understand. <laughs> People think it's easy to, take, to stay 260. It's not. you got to work out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to enjoy that here. And then, uh, yeah, of course, anything to get out. Uh, band and crew, we do everything together. So I heard the, the falls were frozen. Is that true? Does that ever happen? I know. Does it really? Does it really happen? No. Wow. No. I, thought they were, I thought they were yanking an alcohol on the chair. This guy. Please. So they really do? No. No. We seem to be split here. People. <laughs> There's a lot of volume for the water. Well, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great site. It's a great site. Thank you. Well worth it. Yes, ma'am. Janet or Janice? Janet, let's see. Janet, thank you. Six shows. With the shows that we do back to back on Friday and Saturday how do you turn that around for the crowds? What do you say to them for the ones that are going to have to get out to the left and come back in? And then how much time do you have? Well, here's another great thing about social media is the buildings also talk to each other. So this started, I don't know where it started in Chicago or if it started in Atlanta or at first or second city on the tour. They've been talking. So the last one we did was Detroit. Snow on the ground. I mean, it's snowing pretty hard there. They take, they've already got 8,000 people for the next show and they have taken them into this place called, the, what was it called, the Coco or whatever the thing was, the little place right across the street. Scanned their tickets, got them ready, and when those people came out, those eight thousand—I uh, mean, they turned the building, turned the building totally empty to full again in less than thirty minutes. So that was that was pretty cool. So when when they're, when they're waiting on me, that that's pretty cool. They're between shows, uh, and then as far as how do we do it? Uh, forgive me because I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself, but it's a perfect way to explain it. If your job was eating ice cream for a living. And your boss comes in and goes, hey, you're going to have to pull a double shift tonight. <laughs> you're, you know, you're like, count me in. It's so much fun. And what's cool, uh, Jimmy Mattingly, the fiddle player, you'll notice him. He's, he's an amazing entertainer. He said it best. He says, I'm so scared that they'll think I'm not giving them their all on the first one that I wear myself out. And then by the time the second one comes around, you just have to find the energy from somewhere else. And where does that energy come from? That new batch of 17,000 people. It's coming. They bring it with them. So it's it's not hard. We want you to think it's hard, but it's the easiest game. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, you mentioned the ticket about the Yes. Have you seen, what do you think the difference is between audience this time versus the last time? I'm going to tell you, and you're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to call karaoke. I really am. It used to just be Dublin, Ireland that could out, so you couldn't hear yourself singing when they were singing. 
now at Reseed. And I think it's I think it's karaoke. I think our inhibitions to sing in front of people are being erased. But the cool thing too is we have Mood TV, the guys that film everything. We didn't have film last time we were here, video and all that stuff. So now you get to see in those cameras, and you see these people, and you swear to God, they think they're the only person in the entire room. 